rich, fertile acres of America. Home of the farmer. Factory for feed, food, and fiber. A checkerboard beauty. And like a checkerboard, a challenge to those who farm. A challenge to the skill of the corn grower, who every year must stake his patience and his pocketbook against the elements of nature. Every season brings its time of harvest, the final answer to the challenge. Here is the return on money and methods, on land, labor, and seed. And because harvest is the payoff, the business-minded farmer is always looking for better farming methods. And new corns for a greater harvest. Today, there's more and more demand for corn, for use here and abroad. And fulfilling this demand is most profitable when you have a greater harvest per acre. The size of the harvest depends largely upon three basic factors which affect the growth of crops. First, there's the natural environment. The soil, weather, water supply, the weeds, insects, and disease. Next, fertility, that which is native to the soil and that which is applied. And finally, genetics is a factor. Varieties that take full advantage of the existing environment and fertility and fit the farmer's particular needs. Modern corn growers profit most by keeping these three factors well balanced with efficient machinery, fertilizers, and agricultural chemicals, plus proven hybrids developed by the producers of pioneer seed corn. For more than 40 years, this organization has been developing hybrid corn that meets the challenges of intensified corn growing. Today, research and production has come a long way since the company was formed in 1926 by Henry A. Wallace and a number of friends. This was the first company ever formed to produce hybrid seed corn. Pioneer is proud of its pioneering achievements. The first hybrid developed from inbred lines ever sold in the corn belt. First breeding work ever done on commercial hybrid corn first hybrid seed corn plant ever built. Today, this same progressive spirit is carried on by dozens of forward-looking men who apply their skills at 15 breeding stations. Men of creative vision based on learning, not only from the book, but also from the field. Men respected for their knowledge, often called upon to lecture at universities. But they are even more at home in the field than on the speaker's stand. Progressive in their thinking and in their objectives, pioneer men are also progressive in their methods of research. Using a computer to compress time and to supply complete data. And they are equally modern in applying their research findings to develop improved hybrids, which are crosses of pure inbred lines cross two inbred lines and you get a single cross. Cross a single cross with another inbred and you have a three-way cross. Cross two single crosses 
and you get the familiar four-way or double cross. The first inbred lines of corn were developed by repeatedly self-pollinating certain plants selected from open pollinated varieties. Today's skilled corn breeders rely on different sources of breeding materials and use more highly refined techniques to develop inbred lines. One method used to get new breeding material involves crossing two existing inbreds and selecting a single new inbred. Another method develops new synthetic open pollinated varieties by crossing proven inbred lines and open pollinated corn. These varieties are a fertile source of new and improved inbred lines developed by five to seven years of self-pollination and selection through the skill and judgment of pioneer research men. By growing an extra generation of corn each winter at Pioneer Southern breeding stations, breeders cut in half the time needed to develop new inbreds and bring improved varieties to farmers years sooner. New approaches to developing improved inbreds are matched at Pioneer with the seed industry's broadest testing program. In its search for improved corn for its area, each of the major Pioneer breeding stations annually tests about 100 new inbreds. Crossing these with five well-known inbreds results in 500 single crosses. Their performance determines which new inbreds should be tested further. The first year's testing eliminates all but perhaps 25. The second year's tests screen out all but three or four of the original 100 inbred lines. Each station's breeders also test between three and 400 promising new hybrids, which may fit the needs of farmers. Each new variety is tested at four to six locations with duplicate plantings at each location to improve accuracy. Extracting meaningful data from these tests brings Pioneer's computer center into action. This results in faster, more accurate data on as many as 19 characteristics for each hybrid tested. Data from 200 test locations on thousands of varieties. Data compiled so that breeders at the various stations can share both ideas and breeding material. Breeders at each research station also run special projects suited to their area's conditions. A sampling of the stations and their specialties shows the depth of pioneer research. At Mankato, Minnesota, blight, prolific and short season corn. Middletown, Delaware, stalk rot, Union City, Tennessee. Maize Dwarf Mosaic. York, Nebraska. Stress and drought resistance. Tipton, Indiana. Blight and corns for special soil types. Princeton, Illinois. Combine harvesting. Johnston, Iowa. Insects, stalk rot, stress, blight, and protein quality. General direction of the Pioneer Breeding Program comes from the research station at Johnston. Here, on more than 400 acres, Pioneer research men concentrate on developing new corns for a greater harvest. These special plots check root lodging resistance. The soil has been soaked by irrigation. A wind machine creates a 70 mile an hour blast against the rows. This test is for corn borer resistance or tolerance. 
Each stalk is artificially infested with corn borer egg masses so that the resistance of each inbred can be more accurately determined. Pioneer breeds for rootworm resistance too. This plot was specially planted the previous year to attract heavy rootworm infestation. In addition, egg-laden soil is placed next to the plants to assure a uniform level of attack. This provides a sure test of rootworm tolerance or resistance. To measure blight resistance, corn is artificially infected with ground-up blight-infected leaves from susceptible varieties grown the previous year. At just this one station, 10 acres are devoted to developing blight-resistant corn. There are plots for breeding corn with higher quality protein. For obtaining data on the silking and tasseling dates of inbred lines. and for inbreeding and crossbreeding tropical and European corns. The Jamaica station, backed by widespread tropical testing, develops varieties especially adapted to lowland tropics. To evaluate corn at high populations, special tests are planted at up to 40,000 kernels per acre. This and similar experiments measure yield differences caused by variations in row width and plant population and help breeders evaluate the features that varieties need to take full advantage of narrow rows and optimum plant populations. Specially adapted combines are the heart of another area of Pioneer's research and development, producing corn that harvests well with modern equipment. Kernels must shell easily, and cobs must resist splitting. Promising crosses are tested at least three years, then planted and evaluated by top-level farmers. When a variety proves itself a top performer in yield and other key characteristics, the parent corn department and production department take on the job of increasing the seed supply. Now the goal is to produce seed corn that gives farmers all the genetic advantages bred into the seed. Because this is a production operation, pioneer men have the opportunity to carry on research and growing methods. Each field is coded and the use of various agricultural products and practices carefully scheduled, applied, and tested. The results become the basis of corn growing recommendations for the farmer to help him bring out the seed's full potential. Here is a symbol that corn growers have learned to trust. It is also the symbol of service provided by Pioneer's experienced agronomists. Armed with the knowledge gained from genetic and production research, pioneer agronomists help farmers make more profitable use of fertilizers, chemicals, and seed. Just as important as the information they give is the information they receive. The feedback they get from the men who make their living growing corn. From what they learn through these contacts, the service agronomists determine the real needs of corn growers and relay that information to the corn breeders. Pioneer seed salesmen also obtain feedback from corn growers. These salesmen know farming, and by frequent contacts with corn growers, they learn more about their needs and wants. Needs that are fulfilled by skillful interpretation of research results providing the modern corn grower with superior seed to best fit his needs today. New generations of corn for greater harvests and profits. 
Tomorrow, Pioneer Research may provide him with multiple eared corn for greater dependability and yields. Corn that can germinate and grow at lower temperatures to add days to the effective growing season. Corn with much greater yield potential than present varieties. Or through studies of plant chemistry, corn that uses soil nutrients more efficiently. All this could be part of tomorrow's new generation of corn that will be planted with the same confidence as the new generation of seed available today. New varieties that provide the farmer with higher yields and more profit per acre. Pioneer new generation seed corn for a greater harvest.